watching and tuning in from our live stream. We are gathered to talk today about the Supreme Court decision on Friday that overturned 50 years of protections for women's health. HHS Secretary Javier Becerra will speak and then he will take questions. And as a reminder, we just ask you to turn off your cell phone to state your name and media outlet when you have a question. And then the secretary may also turn to Sam Bagenstoss, who is in the front row. Sam is our general counsel at HHS for the department at large. If you have questions or you need help answering uh, anything that comes up today or further background points, please be in touch with our press team. We do have a website that's showing on a monitor to my left and it's reproductiverights.gov. We just launched it ahead of today and we hope you will turn to it as well for additional information about the rights of women that exist today. Thank you so much. I'm honored to introduce Secretary Javier Becerra. Good morning. Thanks for taking the time. On Friday, June 24th, five Americans decided to use the vast power bestowed upon them by our democracy and our Constitution to unconsciously put at risk the life and health of millions of our fellow Americans. They chose to unconscionably limit Americans' established freedom and autonomy to control their own body, decisions usually made in consultation with their doctor, not a politician. And they chose to unconscionably strip away the fundamental health care protections that every American of childbearing age has known all their lives. Friday's Supreme Court decision was despicable, but it was not unpredictable. HHS has been preparing for this for some time. That's why earlier this year, we launched our HHS Reproductive Access Task Force to plan for every action necessary to protect women's access to reproductive health care. There is no magic bullet but if there is something we can do, we will find it and we will do it at HHS. Indeed, that was the instruction I received from the President of the United States. Last Friday, President Biden announced the actions he is taking to ensure medication abortion is available to the full ex extent possible and that women can travel safely from states where abortion is now banned to states where abortion is legal. Here is how HHS will support these issues. First, HHS will take steps to increase access to medication abortion. Federal law requires our programs to provide medication abortion in certain circumstances, such as the life of the woman, rape, or incest. Now, more than ever, it is imperative that all federally supported programs and services are complying with the law. Second, I am directing the Office for Civil Rights within HHS to ensure patient privacy and non-discrimination for patients seeking reproductive health care, as well as for providers who offer, offer that reproductive health care service. Third, I am directing the Department to examine its authority under the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act, EMTALA, to ensure that clinical judgment of doctors and hospitals is supported in treating pregnant patients, including those experiencing pregnancy loss or complications, and reaffirming that abortion care can be appropriate to stabilize patients. Fourth, I am directing all agencies in my department to work to ensure that all providers, from doctors to pharmacists to clinics, 
have appropriate training and resources to handle family planning needs, including administering patient referrals for care and helping patients navigate this new reality. Fifth, I am directing the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, to take every legally available step to protect family planning care, including emergency contraceptives and long-acting reversible contraceptives uh, such as IUDs. Healthcare is a matter to be decided by patients and their providers. As part of these efforts, we will make clear that family planning providers are able to participate in the Medicaid program. These clinics provide safe care and have a vast exper expertise in providing reproductive health care. Let me now tell you a little more about why I think medication abortion is so critical. Medication abortion has been approved by the FDA for years and is safe for patients. It is the gold standard for care when someone who's pregnant experiences a miscarriage which is all too real for many expectant mothers across the country. I say this as the spouse of a more than 30-year high-risk OB-GYN. The Supreme Court's decision will result in worsened health outcomes and death for some patients. Working to increase access to this drug is a national imperative and in the public interest. We will continue to support the FDA and its rigorous scientific review for these safe and effective drugs. We will also work with the Attorney General and the Department of Justice as they work to ensure that states may not ban medication abortion based on a disagreement with the FDA's expert judgment about the drug's safety and efficacy. And we will issue guidance to providers to ensure they receive accurate and robust information on medication abortion. The HHS Reproductive Access Task Force will report to me on additional impactful ways to ensure appropriate information about access to and coverage for sexual and reproductive health care, as well as coordinate other federal agencies. I was at a Planned Parenthood clinic in St. Louis, Missouri on Friday morning when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. I saw in real time the impact of this unconscionable decision. The clinical director had to almost immediately start turning away patients as the state's ban went into effect. This clinic has stopped providing safe and legal abortion care. People in the room were visibly shaken. There were tears. And there was this unshakable sense of sadness. Now, after my visit to the clinic in St. Louis, I traveled a short distance across the state line to another clinic in Fairview Heights, Illinois, a state that, unlike Missouri, still had lawful abortion care. There I visited a site that helps patients get care by providing assistance, ranging from helping patients find appointments, to paying for their travel expenses, to providing abortion care. It was shocking that in the United States of America, a short drive can make such a dire and dra draconian difference in healthcare outcomes. I saw restrictions that leave, leave women and families on unequal footing and widen maternal health disparities. The impact was visible and real. This is a critical moment in our history. How we respond will speak to how we view the rights, the dignity, and the well-being of women everywhere. This is a moment of crisis in healthcare. At HHS, we will leave no stone unturned. All options are on the table. We will do everything within our legal limit of the law to reach patients and support providers. I know we're all tired. Our hearts are heavy and broken by this loss of rights and dignity. But now is the time for us to continue moving forward for the many across the country who have live, who live now in banned abortion states who lack voice and the representation they need. Prepare to take any questions you might have.
And sir, you're going to go ahead and just select who you're going to select who speaks for me. Hi, Shira Stein from Bloomberg Law. Um, has HHS instructed FDA to speed up the process by which pharmacies can get certified to dispense mifepristone? And you also mentioned um, access to, to medication abortion. Will that include supporting Gen Biopro's ongoing lawsuit in Mississippi? The um, manufacturer is arguing that the FDA REMS preempts Mississippi's additional restrictions. So medication abortion is available. Uh, Drugs like mifepristone have been shown to be safe and effective. Uh, I will let the FDA respond to what it will do and what it is uh, in the process of doing. Uh, but I certainly will tell you that we are working with the FDA to make sure that uh, they have every opportunity to uh, continue to provide Americans with access to safe and effective uh, treatments. Uh, we will continue to work with partners, uh, whether public or private, to make sure that women have access to the uh, reproductive care services and treatments that they need. Thank you. Next question. Maya Goldman. Hi, Maya Goldman with Modern Healthcare. Um, you mentioned that you're directing OCR to protect privacy for patients and providers. Can you elaborate on, on what that will look like? Uh, under federal law, patients have rights to privacy. Uh, they have rights to access to certain types of care. Uh, we will make sure that we uh, both investigate and then enforce the law to make sure that providers are in compliance, that uh, patients are being uh, provided with the care that they deserve. Uh, we don't want anyone's private health information, for example, to be leaked in ways that violate federal law. We also want to make sure that no one misunderstands what the Supreme Court's ruling on Friday in Dobbs means that they uh, do not believe that they have any rights whatsoever. Rights continue forward, whether it's family planning, whether it is in birth control services, and we want to make sure that there's no misunderstanding and that we will enforce any violations of those rights. Okay. Yeah, Mike. Um, can you, do you have a sense of what specific actions to, to enforce those will look like though? Will that be audits, surveys, what will that? possibly look like? Uh, just as we're can, keeping every option on the table of what we can try to do, we will keep every option on the table of what we can do to enforce the law. Okay, our next question comes from Victoria Knight. Victoria Knight, Kaiser Health News, thank you. Um, oh, thank you. Um, so congressional Democrats are calling for the Biden administration to create clinics where people could access abortions on federal lands. Are there any plans to do so? And if so, where would that be? Would that be on national park land or would that be in VA facilities? Is that something y'all are looking at? Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. Um, what I can tell you is that we are aware of a number of ideas and proposals, many of which we have been considering internally ourselves. Uh, we have made no decisions yet. We certainly would have conversation with the president to make sure we implement his directives to us in trying to protect women's reproductive health care services. But as I said, every option is on the table. We will take a look at everything we can, and everything we do will be in compliance with the law. Okay, Selena Simmons Duffin from NPR. Hi, um, I'm Selena Simmons Duffin from NPR. Um, <laughs> My question is, you haven't, you've mentioned uh, a bunch of health agencies, including FDA and CMS, and the things that th is happening there. I haven't heard you mention CDC, and I'm curious about the public health impact. Um, in this case, I mean, a lot of experts are warning that pregnant people are gonna die, um, and CDC does prevention and looks at public health big picture. So what actions could CDC be doing, or what is happening on that front? And I, I won't uh, pretend to be able to speak uh, eloquently for everything CDC can do. And I, so I know you'll pose the question directly to CDC, but this is what I can tell you. Uh, they are in the business of prevention. They are in the business of education and information. And I guarantee you that we will be using every agency, including CDC, to make sure that we are getting to Americans the information they need so they can exercise their rights. And so CDC will obviously play an important role, especially as we look at this on a grander scale of uh, the impact to public health. Okay, we'll take another question at this point. Let's see, Cheryl. 
Stolberg, New York Times. Yes. Hi, I'm Cheryl Stolberg from the New York Times. Um, two questions. First, um, with respect to medication abortion, is it the position of the department that because the FDA has approved these pills, that any doctor in any state may prescribe them? And then second, with respect to Planned Parenthood, um, you know that Planned Parenthood has been excluded from Medicaid family planning programs in certain states, including Missouri. And is it the department's position that those exclusions are a violation of federal law? And so, Cheryl, because those are somewhat precise questions, I'm going to try to give you as precise an answer as I believe at this stage at least I can. And with my legal counsel in front of me, I, I want to make sure I, I stay within my lane. Um, FDA has found medication abortion m treatments uh, like Mifepristone safe and effective. In this country, uh, in order for drugs to be made available to the American public, the FDA must act, uh, consider that drug, and announce whether or not it has found it to be safe and effective. Mifepristone, uh, those medications uh, that may be classified as medication abortion that have received FDA's uh, approval as safe and effective are therefore available for prescription. I, what I won't do in answering your question is tell you what precisely that means because I want to, as I said before, we're going to stay within the confines of the law. Even though it's a law that I personally believe jeopardizes the health of women, uh, we will stay within the confines of the law. I want to make sure that whatever we tell you is within the confines of the law. Medication abortion, those treatments that FDA has signed off on as safe and effective are available to be prescribed. Under what conditions? Stay tuned. On the second question, which was? Um, I can hear you with that. Yeah, the second question was um, Planned Parenthood contends that yes. its exclusion from state family planning programs violates federal law. And do you agree that that violates federal law? Under our laws, our federal laws, there are certain services that must be made available uh, to those who are receiving care under programs administered or funded by the, by the federal government. Uh, that includes, uh, in some cases, abortion services under certain conditions. We will make sure that if a state is utilizing federal funds under federal programs, health care programs, that they respect the laws uh, at the federal level, in which, in which in many cases include abortion care services under certain conditions. We're going to take another question now. Rachel Nagel of ABC News. I'm Mary Bruce with ABC News. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, so far, you seem to have been restating largely existing policy, reminding Americans of the assistance that is available. But you yourself just said this decision was not unpredictable. When can we expect more concrete steps to be announced? What's the holdup here? Or are you acknowledging that your hands are largely tied? Uh, Mary, it's, uh, it was a long decision. Uh, and it, it did upend 50 years of precedent. And so you want to make sure that what you do is within, as I said, the confines of the law. We're not interested in going rogue and, and doing things just because. We want to make sure what we tell Americans is accurate because we hear, we know a lot Americans are hearing a lot of inaccurate information. And so uh, to every American who's impacted, uh, my apologies that I, as I said, I, we can't tell you there's a silver bullet. But what I am saying to you is that the more we dig, we will do everything we can with what we find to make sure we're protecting women's reproductive health care services. It, it, it takes a little time because we want to do it right and we want to do it according to the law. And just one follow, you mentioned yesterday that, that you're looking at possible ways to help women with transportation, women who may need to travel to another state to get an abortion. What options are on the table? Are we, you considering vouchers, things like that? And how do you ensure that it doesn't conflict with the Hyde Amendment? Yeah. Once we tell you exactly what we believe we are able to do, have the money to do, we will let you know. But until then, what I can simply say to you is every option is on the table. Thank you. One more question, it looks like. We'll move to the third row. Yeah. 
Thank you, Shafali Luthra with Kaiser, or with the 19th, sorry about that. Um, I wanted to go back to the question about preemption in particular. Are you in the DOJ thinking seriously about filing a lawsuit that might challenge state laws banning access to medication abortion given the FDA's approval? And as a follow-up to that, for the folks who are concerned about being criminalized, if they do take mifepristone and go to the ER, are you prepared to defend them in court? We will certainly assert and defend our legal authorities. We will certainly enforce federal law. We will absolutely protect Americans' rights to care under federal law. And we will do everything we can to make sure Americans understand what their rights are. What exactly that translates into depends on what a state tries to do. And uh, what I can simply tell you is that we will continue to try to clarify for you, but mostly for the American public, what their rights are, what our authorities are, and so that way they know if indeed anyone, whether a state politician or a provider in your state, is violating your rights. We'll try to be there, and we'll try to make it clear what your rights are. But it's tough to answer some of these questions more precisely until we know exactly what the states are doing. If we see a state, for example, trying to deny uh, a particular patient care in, emer in an emergency room, which could include abortion care services if it's appropriate to, to preserve that woman's life or health, uh, we will take action. Uh, we will do everything we can. But we have to make sure first Americans know what their rights are. And so that's why this is so important, because we know that there is misinformation out there about what the Supreme Court did. We want to make sure it's clear that Americans didn't lose every right they have. Americans still can assert their rights, and we will do everything we can to protect them. We, we have heard uh, cases, uh, we have heard reports and complaints. We are going to move as aggressively as we can under the law to both investigate and then enforce. Uh, we have to be able to enforce based on the law, and so we have to make sure we've collected the evidence, but we are intent on protecting people's rights under the law. Okay, thank you, Secretary. Um, at this thank time, you we're going to conclude, and we're happy to follow up with any other questions later. Thank you. Thank you all very much.